Check one, mic check one, two. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, it's a brand new week. We are on October 11th. It's Monday. My name is MC Medina, and this is Conscious Crypto. Brand new studio setup over here. Special shout out to Mr. David Pranazen, Panasicodelico, helping us with a brand new uh, layout over here at the Casa de Prana TV. I mean, Casa de Prana TV Studios in the underground bunker here on twitch.tv also going to be soon uh doing some live streaming on youtube as well and on facebook we're going to get into the chat here a little bit who check in we're going to check into the chat who do we have in the chat right now um let's get it started so much um so much news so many things happening over the weekend in regards to uh crypto again this is conscious crypto where uh we're bringing you the latest and the greatest in crypto DeFi news or DeFi crypto news, depending on how you want to call it, how you want to say it. And a um, <clears throat> whole bunch of uh, upward movement all across the board. Uh, we're going to get straight into it, guys. Um, let's start off with the market coin, the prices here. We got Bitcoin at 54000 Hold on, let me hit this refresh button just so I can make sure. Bitcoin is at 57,417. And it looks like because of this upwards movement, we should be getting closer to the 100,000 by the end of the year. Experts saying right now that we could even get to 150 or 200,000 by uh, January 1st. So definitely keep your eyes on, on the... Um, the growth of Bitcoin. Let's get straight into Ethereum right now. Uh, Ethereum is at 3,560, and that's a 0.92% gain. XRP, not looking so good. It's it's down um, negative 3%, negative 3.5% uh, in the last 24 hours. Uh, Bitcoin Cash is up 0.41 EOS down 4.22 and doge is also down unfortunately that's very interesting um we're gonna get into some some news here so let's go straight into doge right now guys because some of the newest the latest news let's see this came in oh this news about doge oh we i think we covered the doge fractal the other day okay so let's get into coin coin telegraph we're going in right now. Uh, U.S. lawmakers most concerned about Treasury response to crypto. Now, this story came in 36 minutes ago. U.S. lawmakers most concerned about the Treasury response to crypto. Exactly 3% of the United States Senate attended the Texas Blockchain Summit on Friday, all addressing their fellow lawmakers' understanding of crypto and the blockchain. Wyoming Senator Cynthia Lummis said the Treasury Department may be more of a threat to innovation in blockchain and cryptocurrencies in the United States than the Securities and Exchange Commission or the Commodity Features Trading Commission. Speaking at the Texas Blockchain Summit in Austin on Friday, Lummis said her recent concerns with the federal agency came from the language concerning brokers of cryptocurrency and the infrastructure bill currently at the center of debate in Congress. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has expressed her support of the legislation under the wording passed by the Senate in August. Brokers would have to report digital asset transactions worth more than $10,000 to the IRS. The definition was proposed uh, the definition that was proposed showed a fundamental misunderstanding of Bitcoin and other digital assets, said Loomis, who claimed many brokers under the bill with little to no knowledge of their clients uh, would not have the information necessary to follow reports. Exactly 3% of the U.S. Senate was in attendance at the Texas Blockchain Summit. Texas Senator Ted Cruz spoke on Bitcoin mining being used to monetize energy creating through oil and gas extraction rather than flaring it. Burning the excess off as wasted fuel. 
Cruz was responding to questions related to the state's power grid during a severe winter storm in February when the senator left Texas for a brief trip to Cancun. <laughs> that was actually pretty funny whenever that happened. Uh, everybody was wondering where did Ted Cruz go during COVID, and uh, we soon found out that he was in Cancun vacationing. <laughs> While Cruz focused mainly on energy concerns, fellow senators John Cornyn and Loomis both implied the key to avoiding misunderstandings, uh, in, misunderstandings in legislation like the crypto amendment to infrastructure bill depended on engagement from the public rather than relying on lawmakers to educate themselves on the subject. According to Cornyn, the language in the infrastructure bill was a little bit of a surprise to members of Congress who didn't have the knowledge necessary to speak on the subject. Cruz claimed there are not five members of the U.S. Senate who could tell you what Bitcoin is, but Luma said she observed, quote, enough understanding following the debate over the infrastructure that the language in, on crypto was likely to be amended in the House version of the bill. Congress is currently struggling to pass long-term legislation surrounding infrastructure, budget reconciliation, and the debt ceiling. Quote, I've worked with the members of both parties who didn't have any interest in Bitcoin and digital assets, and now we know each other, and now we talk regularly about this, said Loomis. I do think there will be some changes in that language, but it's beginning to show a pattern in my mind by the Treasury Department, the IRS, that we're really going to have to work on keeping the heavy hand of government at bay. Originally scheduled for a vote before September 27th, the infrastructure bill, which passed in the Senate, has begun entangled, has been entangled with a $3.5 trillion House proposal in a political maneuver between progressive and modern Democrats coupled with Republican attempts to prevent the government from defaulting on its debt, lawmakers will likely try to move forward this week. So it looks like the um, crypto summit, uh, the blockchain, the Texas blockchain summit that happened uh, in Austin over the weekend, it looks like it was on Friday, um, brought a lot of attention to the crypto market. It looks like we've got uh, senators and different people who are responsible for making legislation calls are becoming more familiar with the lingo. They're becoming more familiar with what it, the different roles are of a miner uh, and these different platforms and how they could potentially benefit not only the individual, but us as a whole. Okay, let's see. BitMEX CEO. Now, this story came in six hours ago saying that Bitcoin will be the legal tender in five countries by 2022. Now, we already know that it's legal tender in uh, El Salvador. Uh, we know that it's legal tender. Um, well, it's being considered in Brazil. Let's dive. Let's dive a little bit deeper into this um, because I know that there's also countries in Africa that have also incorporated Bitcoin as legal tender. Now, developing economies are more affected by issues related to remittances and inflation. Bitmex's CEO said, "Countries in the de developing world will soon follow in the steps of El Salvador and make Bitcoin legal tender." Bitmex CEO Alexander Hopner recently predicted. In a Wednesday blog post, Hopner expressed support for El Salvador adopting Bitcoin as legal tender in September, predicting that developing countries will be leading the way in Bitcoin adoption. My prediction is that by the end of the year, we'll have at least five countries that accept Bitcoin as legal tender. All of them will be developing countries. According to Hopner, developing countries will adopt Bitcoin faster due to three major factors. Number one, the growing need for cheaper and faster international remittances, uh, massive global inflation, and political issues. As opposed to consumers in more developing countries, people in developing economies are more affected by issues related to cross-border payments and inflation, Hopner said. The CEO noticed that remittances make up to 23% of El Salvador's gross domestic product in 2020. While the World Bank assessed 
that low and middle income countries receive about 75% of total global remittances. He added that people around the world are increasingly looking at Bitcoin as a solution to weather massive inflation, citing rapid crypto adoption in Turkey uh, amid a 19.2% inflation rate. Hopner went on to say that El Salvador's Bitcoin move will make it easy for other countries to consider similar moves. But if it's a reality, quote, but if it's a reality that politics will play a big role in the adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender, it's also true that any failings by these leaders in the implementation phase may hurt wider adoption for cryptocurrencies uh, in general, he added. A former CEO of German stock exchange Bowers uh, Stuttgart, Hopner took over as a CEO of BitMEX in December 2020, replacing Arthur Hayes. Hopner is not alone in thinking that more countries will follow El Salvador's lead in adopting Bitcoin. Last month, Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson predicted that a lot more countries will adopt cryptocurrencies. World-renowned computer programmer Edward Snowden also believes that latecomers may regret hesitating. Some major figures in the cryptocurrency space have been hesitant to praise El Salvador's crypto adoption, sparked by President Nayib Bukele. On Friday, Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin criticized Bukele's approach to adopting Bitcoin, arguing that forcing businesses to accept a specific cryptocurrency is contrary to the ideals of freedom that are supposed to be so important to the crypto space. So a lot more adoption happening all around the world. Um, it's a good thing that these different platforms are, are truly starting to, uh, to harness the potential that Bitcoin has to offer. All right, this next segment, y'all know what it is, is going to be brought to you by Casa de Prana Cacao Beans. I'm going to take a sip of this yerba mate. Give me a second. Yerba mate coming from Argentina. Uh, energy for the mind, body, and soul. All right, let's go into the latest and the greatest in DeFi right now, the uh, decentralized finance, also known as DeFi, is a sector within the overall cryptocurrency and blockchain industry focused on providing a decentralized version of mainstream financial opportunities. Okay, let's see. Survivorship bias has led to an imbalance in the crypto ecosystem. Y'all leave your comments below right now, too. Please, please. Let's see. Who do we have here in the chat? Pana psychodelico. There he goes. <clears throat> let's get into... Let's go into the Facebook, man. We're going to go into Facebook Live here. I'm going to see... Um, is, do we have a phone stand? An extra phone stand somewhere? Let's see if I, I'm gonna see if I could get these people on Facebook going on here. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the link. So hopefully we'll be able to get some people in here. Uh, and then we're gonna get right back into uh, some of this, the latest DeFi news, y'all. Um, but we're gonna take a moment, do a little bit of promo here. We're gonna copy the link, share the clip, do the whole thing. Yes, sir. Okay, DeFi. Bueno, andaba pensando el uno de esos stands, like the metal ones. El chiquitillo. Lo que usamos para... El que se mueve que tú tienes. El que se mueve... The one that like f goes like this, like that little metal one. Yeah. Man, it's getting hot in the underground bunker here at Casa de Prana TV. This is Conscious Crypto. Um, we're going to be getting back into some of the goods here in a second. I'm going to get the stand. Let's see if we can uh, get some more people up in here. Um, sharing now. Let's see. We're going to copy that link. Let's go into Facebook Live here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's 
Perfect. Thank you, sir. Y'all, please, please leave your uh, thumbs up there for Mr. David Pranazen. Making things happen here. Tap description. I'm going to say we are live. There we go. See if we can get get the homies checking in here. Yeah, because on Friday we had a pretty, pretty good uh little session. Um also I wanna I wanna um share with you guys we got a couple of guests lined up for this week. Um we're gonna be getting into more information about the metaverse. Um, if you don't know what that is, then we will be sharing with you some information about the metaverse soon. And um, let's see if I can get a good camera angle here. Yeah, we're going to be sharing more information about the metaverse soon. Um, and what does that mean? It's a whole universe that's going to that's being created right now for it's what's the best way for me to say this? It's a digital representation of the very world that we live in. Uh, what's up? If y'all are checking in on Facebook, thanks for checking in right now. It's Conscious Crypto. Let's see if I can put a little something back here to. There we go. Conscious Crypto here with MC Medina, and we are live on Twitch right now every single weekday at 2 o'clock Central Standard Time, 2 p.m giving you the latest and the greatest in crypto DeFi news. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Uh, let's see. DeFi picks up the pace as alternate blockchains and NFTs boom. It looks like we got Marley outside hanging out. So y'all stick around. You might get a chance to see Marley here in a little bit. Okay. Um, if you've seen Marley before, leave comments below. Let me know what you think about that. Uh, let's get in some more of this uh, Yerba Mate tea. And let's get straight into DeFi picks up the pace as alternate blockchains and NFTs boom. On the back of the incredible crypto market recovery and the boom in NFT markets, the DeFi market has grown 18% in October. As September ended, the cryptocurrency markets recovered from the so-called September curse handsomely to hit a market capitalization of $2.32 trillion. The decentralized finance market has been an integral part of this growth. The total value locked TVL in DeFi protocols grew more than 20% from $113.5 billion on September 28th to hit $137 billion on October 6th as what does it say on october 6th as per oh man i just lost my spot let's see the total value locked in DeFi protocols grew more than 20 percent up to 113.5 billion on september 28th to hit 137 million on sub to, uh, on october 6th as per data from dap radar that's where we were okay so dap radar one of the companies providing um information here in regards to um percentage growths and in the DeFi protocols um even the bank of america global banking giant uh has revealed its bullish outlook on DeFi and non-fungible tokens uh nfts in an october 4th report of Bank of America Securities, a subsidiary of Bank of America, the firm evaluated the scope of crypto assets beyond, quote, just Bitcoin. Bitcoin's strength can execute automated programs, smart tokens such as Ether, Cardano, Solana, and others, with blockchains that can do more, excuse me, than securely record payment contracts, <clears throat> such as making a payment after an event. <clears throat> Uh, this is decentralized finance, where smart contracts automate manual processes of traditional finance. 
the report states. It also compared tokenization to the early days of the internet and spoke of the decentralization and tokenization of many aspects of finance as it currently exists. Cointelegraph discussed the rapid expansion of the DeFi markets with Johnny Liu, the CEO of crypto exchange KuCoin. He explained, quote, the popularity of the DeFi market is growing as more people are starting to understand that a smart contract can be a worthy alternative to a traditional loan or bank deposit. The amount of funds locked in DeFi reflects market adoption among private investors who are moving their decentralized industry. While the DeFi sector, TVL, has seen a bump from the massive price increase of various projects, native tokens, Liu also attributes the growth to the attractive rates offered by DeFi platforms. A recent report by DAP Radar revealed that the TVL in the industry gained 53.45% quarter on quarter in Q3 2021. In September, the unique Active wallets, or the UAW, linked to any decentralized application hit a daily average of 1.7 million. The quarterly average UAW is 1.54 million. So it looks like we were up on the average about 0.24 million, which is really good. Look, if you're on Facebook checking in, please, please, please consider checking us out on Twitch. This is Casa de Prana TV, Conscious Crypto. Uh, you'll be able to hear a lot better on the Twitch stream. And uh, please drop comments below on the Twitch because we got to get you in there. We got to have at least five people in the chat. All right. So please help us out. Share the link. Uh, let's get into the next generation here. The DeFi ecosystem began on the Ethereum blockchain because of the smart contract functionality it offered. However, several other blockchain networks have since deployed smart contract functionality on their networks through layer one or layer two solutions. The most prominent of these networks are Binance, Smart Chain, Solana, Avalanche, Terra, and Polygon. Most recently, the Cardano network witnessed smart contract deployment as a part of the Alonzo hard fork. If y'all haven't already gotten a chance to look into Cardano, Solana, Terra, Avalanche, and Polygon, all of these coins, all of these altcoins are going to be very relevant to the future of humanity. They all are part of projects of the DeFi movement, which means a decentralized movement for finances and um all four of those entities are worth looking into because uh <clears throat> they, de they definitely have solid application for the future of humanity if you're checking us out on facebook please 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 check us out on twitch even though the growth of these networks could be seen perceived to be organic there is one major issue with the ethereum blockchain that could have contributed to the growth uh gas fees the EIP-1559 proposal that came as part of the London hard fork included the burning of ETH tokens in an attempt to make Ethereum ultrasound money. Quote, ultrasound money. Eventually improve scalability and reduce gas fees. However, even though the fees are not as absurd as they used to be during the peak of the bull run in May, there have been a few instances in the last several weeks where the average transaction fee in the Ethereum network took a huge spike. Notably, on September 7th, uh, the fee went to $21.29. And on September 7th, the gas price went to a four month high of $25.43. So it looks like it went up there about $4 uh, within that time frame. Okay, Martinelli said that there is little doubt that high gas fees on Ethereum, particularly severe, recently due to the con congestion from NS uh, NFTs. Uh, this has helped spur on the rapid adoption of other networks layer two solutions are helping ethereum scale and we're excited to see ongoing developments in this space the continued popularity of nfts is also a significant driver of this growth the uh aforementioned report by dap radar mentioned that the nft space has seen exponential growth as well 
In quarter three, the market generated over $10.67 billion in trading volumes, thus entailing a 704% increase from the second quarter and a massive 38,060% increase year on year. While earlier in the year, most of the major NFT sales were on the Ethereum blockchain, now blockchains like Binance, Smart Chain, Solana, Polygon, Avalanche, and Tezos are beginning to catch up. Recently, an NFT from the biggest collection in the Solana ecosystem, Solana Monkey Business, sold for $13,027. I'm sorry, $13,027 sold, uh, currently worth more than $2.1 million breaking the platform's previous NFT record. Shane Malador, the global head of business development at crypto trading platform Ascendex, spoke with Cointelegraph about the potential of NFTs. Now, he says, quote, due to the rapid growth of the market, some may say the market is a bubble, but I believe that NFTs offer enormous value propositions beyond just the collectivity of JPEGs or images. NFTs can be used to record the ownership of not only digital items, but collectibles, fractionalized assets, and even virtual worlds. And the virtual world, going back to the metaverse, we're gonna have a guest later on this week on Wednesday, and she's gonna be bringing in a lot more information about the metaverse and how can we get involved into the metaverse? How can we help develop the metaverse? Metaverse. How can we obtain a our little piece, our own little piece of property in the metaverse? And she's gonna be answering all those questions. Um, let's get into uh, mistakes, bugs, and hacks. The rapid expansion of the DeFi ecosystem is not without its setbacks due to a combination of lack of understanding and scrupulous players there have been several exploits and hacks throughout the growth phase. On September 30th, DeFi interest rate protocol Compound Finance announced that there was a token distribution bug in its newly implemented proposal, uh, Proposal 62. This flaw accidentally rewarded users with 70 million in COMP tokens or COMP tokens. In the aftermath, another 65 million COMP tokens are at risk as the update in the code wouldn't take effect for the next three days due to a time lock. In total, the bug put $162 million, quote, up for grabs, making it an extremely costly mistake. On October 7th, the protocol passed a proposal to fix this issue. In another instance of a technical error, the cryptocurrency exchange Bitfinex paid a transaction fee of over $23 million to transfer 100,000 of Tether, uh, USDT, on the Ethereum blockchain to a layer two, to a layer two subsidiary platform. Diversify, um, well, to the, to the level, to the layer two subsidiary platform called Diversify. However, the goodwill of the miner prevailed as he returned the funds to the exchange. Despite the lucrative nature of the DeFi markets, such widely covered instances of hacks, bugs, and mistakes could serve as deterrents for institutional investors and retail investors alike. Retail investors are even more susceptible to such events of financial loss due to the lack of sophistication and knowledge that institutional investors possess. Thus, they have often they often serve as a benchmark for retail investors, Molidor told Cointelegraph. Institutional and retail entrance into DeFi is almost like a feedback loop. As more retail users enter the space and the market cap grows, institutions start to examine the industry more closely to explore economic opportunities. Excuse me. <clears throat> as institutions enter DeFi, the space is then given more visibility. From this visibility, DeFi enters the mainstream discourse, and yet again, more retail users become familiar with the benefits and economic rewards that DeFi provides. But these negative instances are only a tiny part of the picture evolving in the DeFi market, which is attempting to revolutionize finance completely as we know it. The user's independence and the innovation that DeFi protocols offer to investors will only serve 
to further grow the space. A whole bunch of good news right there. And uh, we're getting more and more into global mass adoption. Uh, looks like there's more corporations coming on. Uh, Bitcoin, let's check out the price of Bitcoin right now. 57655. So it looks like we are on our way towards $60,000 for uh for one Bitcoin. Man. It's a uh, quite a move there. <clears throat> All right, let's get into some more of this latest and greatest here on Conscious Crypto and uh this is Casa de Prana TV. Uh, Conscious Crypto bringing you the latest and the greatest in the DeFi news. South Korean opposition set to tackle controversial crypto tax law. And let's see. South Korean opposition set to tackle. Opposition lawmakers are seeking a one-year delay in the enactment of the law as well as a lowering of the tax burden on crypto traders. Lawmakers belonging to South Korea's opposition People Power Party have prepared a fresh challenge to the planned crypto tax law. According to the Korea Herald, opposition lawmakers are advocating for a one-year extension to the start of crypto taxation in the country. As previously reported by Cointelegraph, South Korea's crypto tax regime that will see the imposition of a 20% levy on cryptocurrency gains above 2.5 million Korean. Uh, one, $2,100 will come into effect in 2022. Apart from the one-year delay, the lawmakers are also pushing for a tiered tax levy for crypto that is in line with the financial investment income tax regime set to be implemented in 2023. Under the legislative proposal, instead of the government's 20% flat rate on profits above $2,100, the lawmakers have suggested 20% on gains between 50 million and 300 million. Uh, one, that's $42,000, between $42,000 to $251,000. Uh, it's a 25% of profits above 30 million one. Commenting on the need to ease the burden on crypto investors, Representative Cho Myung Hee argued that a tax regime for cryptocurrencies should be in line with the country's financial investment income tax. The People Power Party's challenge to the crypto tax bill comes on the heels of a similar action by lawmakers belonging to the ruling Democratic Party back in September. However, an argument between the lawmakers and the country's finance minister reportedly put to rest any plans geared toward delaying the enactment of the crypto tax law. South Korea's crypto tax regime is one of many strict regulations enacted by the government in recent times that could shape the country's cryptocurrency market moving forward. In September, the compulsory licensing requirement for South Korean crypto exchanges came into effect with several smaller platforms being forced to shut down. Well, uh, looks like South Korea's... Uh, Definitely putting their foot down. Hopefully we get some more miners to check in over here on this side. If you are hanging out with us, please, in the chat, let us know where are you tuning in from? Where are you at? I want to know what our reach is. Um, let's see. Swiss Think Tank Initiatives. Okay, this this uh, brand news right here. Brand new news. <laughs> We have Swiss think tank initiatives vote to add Bitcoin in federal constitution. Successful or not, the vote will bring crypto education to people who are not yet Bitcoin savvy. 2B4CH founder said. I know you guys are wondering what is 2B4CH? And um, we're going to get straight into it. Oh, almost messed up my camera over here. All right. 2B4CH is a Swiss nonprofit think tank 
assisting in this state in exploring cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and blockchain technology. It's launching an initiative that could make Bitcoin one of the country's reverse asset. Oh, sorry, not reverse reserve assets <laughs> on friday the association announced plans to start a popular federal initiative by collecting a hundred thousand signatures for the introduction of bitcoin to article 99 clause 3 of the swiss federal constitution the initiative specifically proposes to add bitcoin to the list of assets held by the swiss central bank which could change the constitutional clause to quote the swiss national bank shall create sufficient currency reserves from its revenues part of these reserves shall be held in gold and bitcoin they say wow so very good news for from the swiss there the initiative specifically proposes to add bitcoin to the list of assets held by the swiss central bank now whether the vote is successful it is not really relative as the initiative is focused on gathering signatures to make this proposal be presented to the Swiss citizens to vote. 2 b 4 CH's founder and chair Yves Benaim told Cointelegraph, if the signatures are gathered successfully, the vote will legally have to happen, and so will the conversations and debates, eventually informing and educating better everyone in Switzerland and hopefully worldwide as we see the example. Benaim said, we hope that the vote will be successful, but even if it isn't, it, already, uh, it's, it will already be a success if the topic is brought to the public debate, he noted. If the vote is successful, the Swiss B National Bank or SNB will need to learn how to add Bitcoin into its reserves, holding it the, quote, best and safest way, which would make Switzerland one of the world's leading nations in the industry and benefit its economy on many levels, Benaim stated, adding, such an addition to the constitution would affect people in Switzerland in a similar way that Silicon Valley and the London Stock Exchange have benefited the people of their respective countries. Wow. So it looks like uh, Mr. Benaim is, is comparing the uh, B4... I'm sorry, 2B4CH looks like it's going to be as revolutionary to Switzerland as Silicon Valley was to the United States and California and um, as revolutionary as the London Stock Exchange whenever that launched. According to Benaim, the uh, 2B4CH is still at the preliminary stage of the project, now testing the potential interest in the initiative. The next steps include presenting the project to the Confederation and collecting signatures officially. When this phase is successfully finished, it will take months or even years before the vote is actually taking place, Benaim said. Founded in Geneva in 2017, 2B4CH is an independent nonprofit association studying social and financial transformations brought by Bitcoin and blockchain technology as well as the impact of decentralized cryptocurrencies. The think tank counts fewer than 20 members so far, and it doesn't accept donations to protect its independence and the privacy of its members. Switzerland has emerged as one of the most crypto-friendly countries around the world, with the canton of Zug piloting Bitcoin payments for public services back in 2016. Last month, the Swiss Financial Market Supervisory Authority approved the country's first crypto fund after authorizing the sixth Swiss exchange to launch a digital asset marketplace. Wow. Okay, so Switzerland continuing to pull big moves in the crypto community. Uh, I'm going to have to do some more research on Switzerland myself because... I didn't know that they were doing so well uh, with the crypto over there. All right, let's get into some more of the latest and the greatest. Um, please, please put a thumbs up in the comments for Mr. David Prana Zen. Prana Psicodelico, uh, we went out this weekend on Saturday. We had a wedding. Uh, I do wedding services on the, week, on the, um, on the side. And um, he came out. We videoed. We got some footage. 
and uh, it was a really great time out there. That's the only reason why we didn't go to the blockchain summit in Austin on Friday, guys. Okay, look, we were caught up. We really wanted to go to the crypto summit. I had friends that were that went out there, um, and they said that it, it was a blast meeting new people, continuing to develop the community, the crypto community, and um, communicating the the benefits of uh, really getting into this full on. All right, let's get into um, this, some Shiba E news, Shiba Inu news, and this is some of the um, top top stories. Is Dogecoin set to follow Shiba Inu's 400% breakout? SHIB's 400% rally brings attention back to dog-themed meme tokens, and it could be a sign that Doge is on the verge of an equal-sized breakout. Meme coins were some of the earliest breakout stars at the start of this year's bull run, and big-name influencers like Elon Musk and Mark Cuban helped to stoke a surge in the price of Dogecoin. The success of Doge eventually spawned the massive litter of dog-themed offshoots that now populate the meme coin pack. This week, the pack is once again on the run after Shiba Inu saw a triple-digit breakout, and Doge looks ready to move higher. Bitcoin sudden move above the $55,000 level appears to have kickstarted the move and even as the price moves lower to test underlying support. Meme tokens are still flashing bullish signals. Aside from Bitcoin's recent breakout and protocol-specific announcements, the rally in meme coin seems to have been kicked off after Elon Musk tweeted a picture of a Shiba Inu puppy. Um... Looks like Elon Musk here took a photo of a puppy inside of a Tesla trunk. <laughs> and the comment on the post is flocky frunk puppy. Um, I don't know what that means. If anybody knows what that means, drop it in the comments below. If you're just now checking in, thank you so much. My name is MC Medina. This is Conscious Crypto, and we're giving you the latest and the greatest in DeFi crypto news. If you're checking us out on Facebook or if you're checking us out on Twitch TV, please, please, please leave comments below. Let me know where are you listening or watching us from? Because we're going to get straight into some more of this Shiba Inus. Inu news. See how I put those two words together, Shiba Inus. And uh, according to CoinGecko of the top five meme coins, Shiba Inu has been the best performer over the past week with its price surging 400% from a low of 0 0.00000700 on October 4th to a multi-month high at 0 0.003529 on October 6th. Look, guys, Shiba Inu coin, it's less than a penny right now. It's like a millionth of a penny or something like that, okay? Highly recommend it. You can get a whole bunch of shibs for really, really cheap. Um, I'm personally holding, I think, 5 million. So if you think about holding 5 million coins and if it goes up to even 50% or let's say 50 cents, let's say it goes up to 25 cents. Let's, let's do that calculation, right? <laughs> let's, let's bring up the calculator here. Okay, Shiba Inu, right? And this is just to give you guys an example of how I'm never losing with crypto. Okay, so if let's say you buy in at point zero zero zero, what is it right now? Zero 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 three five two nine. Let's do that. Three five point zero 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 three five two nine. Okay, let's say times, let's just say you put $100 in. Okay, you put in $100 and then that will bring you up to, oh man, it's not, I'm having issues over here, guys. 
So what, what I'm wanting to, to communicate, the most important thing that, that I can communicate right now is essentially that if, if you buy in on a coin and it's less than one cent and it gets up to 25 cents or even 50 cents, the gains are ridiculous. So if you were to own, if you were to have 5 million Shiba Inu coins, if they were, if Shiba Inu were to go up to, let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, that's 500. If it would go up to just 25 cents, you would be a millionaire is, what I, is essentially what I'm saying here. So buying in at these ridiculously low numbers is how we're able to see these 400% gains, but you're not going to be able to see 400% gains if you're not buying in when the coin starts off. Like when it's brand, when it's a brand new coin, it's super duper low. And, um, if, if we were to buy in at, less than a penny that means when it gets to a penny 25 cents 50 cents 75 cents a dollar the amount of growth there to be had uh is quite phenomenal i mean i i don't see these types of gains in any other industry um the stock market is has long it's been long time since they've seen if they have ever seen a 400 percent um spike so the surge in price of Shiba comes as the ecosystem behind the token has expanded to include the Shiba Swap Exchange, which claims to offer low exchange fees than the Uniswap and multiple ways for token holders to earn a yield through providing liquidity or staking. Shiba also benefits from being one of the few meme tokens listed in the multiple large cryptocurrency exchanges, including Coinbase and Binance which provides ample liquidity and trading volume for traders interested in SHIB. The Shiba Inu community has also been showing an increasing interest in the upcoming launch of the protocol's Shiboshi NFT. Dogecoin prepares for a breakout. SHIB may have notched the largest percentage gain, but Doge remains to the top but Doge remains the top dog of the pack with the furthest reach and a market cap of 33.26 billion. Vortex data from the markets began to detect a bullish outlook for Doge on October 1st prior to the recent price rise. The Vortex score exclusive to uh, Cointelegraph is an algorithmic comparison of historical and current market conditions derived from a combination of data points, including market sentiment, trading volume, recent price movements, and Twitter activity. As seen in the chart above here, the Vortex score for Doge climbed into the green zone and hit a high of 74 on October 1st around 61 hours before the price increased 26.7 percent wow over the next few days all right guys and i want to remind you really really quick that the views and opinions expressed here are solely those of the author and not my personal views now i'm not a financial advisor but i am obligated by the great creator to share all the information and I am just sharing what I have done in the crypto community. And again, I have never lost money with crypto. Let's go to the newest and the latest and the greatest. If you guys are on the chat, I need to know where you guys are watching from. Please, please, please tell me. Oh man, I feel like I got to sneeze. Me pasa una toalla. Please, please. Oh, man. Eyes are getting watery. All right. Oh, the, the Bitcoin price hits 57,000. All right, guys. This story came in five hours ago. We're getting into like the last, uh, the last 10 minutes of the show of the stream here. Give me a second. I'm going to see if I can clear up. Awesome. 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 Um, 
Let's get into the Bitcoin price hitting 57,000, a five month high. Five things to watch in Bitcoin this week, this week. So this today, October 11th, this week, we need to be watching out for this. The 11th through the 18th, we're going to be watching this for this week. Bitcoin price action beats last week's local high to edge over closer into final resistance before all time highs of 64,500. Wow. So, guys, this is what the all the experts, if you're on Facebook, Maldonado, Gili, ¿qué está pasando? Yeah, man, shout out to our Facebook friends over here. Uh, thanks for checking us out. Por favor, usted ya sabe, si tienes ahí chance, oportunidad, vete pa' Twitch, bro. Ahí dejé el link. Déjanos ahí un comentario si, si puedes. Um, Para ver si te puedo agregar aquí al chat, bro. If anyone has any questions too, anybody's got questions, please let me know what, what they are. Uh, but yeah, we are going to get into um, the all-time high of 64500 for Bitcoin is what we are aiming for, uh, according to all the experts. If we are able to hit the $64,000 mark, uh, then we will be seeing Bitcoin going up to $100,000, according to people like Michael Saylor, uh, Ben Armstrong, and so the these people are, are the ones that I like to look, uh, I like to watch and listen to, and these are the experts that have been in the scene for quite a while now, um, and, and very trustworthy sources of, of information. Bitcoin is in top form, almost literally, as it heads into a new week, less than 15% away from all-time highs. A classic cocktails of factors has laid the foundation for a fourth quarter finale, which analysts are now confidently comparing to the bull runs of 2013 and 2017. Real interesting stuff. I don't know if you guys uh, remember, but back in 2013 and 2017, well, 2017 is when we hit the 64.5 mark, 64,500. That was in 2017. So, um, Let's let's go on uh, decoup decoupling the from macro market movements and the U.S. dollar. Bitcoin is once again looking like the gold alternative that investors want. All while altcoins slip away, with October still only in its second full week. Coin Telegraph takes a look at what might lie in store for Bitcoin price action over the coming days. Let's go right into it. If you guys have questions, please leave them in the uh, chat below. Put a peace sign or a thumbs up for uh, our brother David Pranazen Panasicodelico. He's making sure that all the questions get answered or get asked. All right, things are looking rosy as the week begins for Bitcoin traders. Last week's four month highs are back again and beaten. With the exception of a curious anomaly on exchange Bitstamp, which saw a mom momentary wick down to 51,000, a quiet weekend, a quiet weekend preserved previous gains. Now seemingly lining up on attack on the final resistance below all time highs of 64,500, Bitcoin price action is delighting, is delight, delighting. Bitcoin prices is delighting market participants. Uh, there's a further aspect behind Bitcoin's strength, however, one that could preserve further upside in the short term. All coins are underperforming, leading to predictions of a Bitcoin season before some form of alt season reemerges later on. As they reported, this might not be until 2022. Give me a second, guys. I'm going to check out what our channel is looking like here on the Twitch. <clears throat> Where's all my Twitchers at? Come on, Twitch. Let's Twitch on, guys. We need to Twitch on now. And ain't this about a Twitch? Let's do this. We're hosting, oh yeah, and now we're sharing. Let's go. 
All right. Back to Facebook, back to Twitch, Twitch, Facebook. And then also, if you if you don't get a chance to catch us at two o'clock uh, on the weekdays, it's OK, because David and I, um, we rip it. We download the video and we we add it to um, my YouTube channel. So if you don't get a chance to watch it at two o'clock, it's OK. It'll be on YouTube for you later. Oh, let's see. Pentoshi. Okay, the situation is particularly visible in Ether, the largest altcoin by market capitalization, which is now at its largest against Bitcoin since the start of August. Ethereum and Bitcoin breakdown while Bitcoin consolidating. Um, looks like uh, Mr. Michael Van de Pope summarized. I'm assuming Bitcoin continues while altcoins are not getting the game yet. Van de Pope, nonetheless, suggested a contentious cycle price peak for Ethereum US dollars of up to 20,000 with a time frame of Q1 2022. All right, it says you are here. It takes a lot to please Bitcoiners when it comes to Bitcoin price action, as any longtime inhabitant of crypto Twitter will know. Even the most unexpected moves in Bitcoin US dollar can only satisfy sentiment for so long before investors demand more. Last week was no exception. Bitcoin gained $3,000 in minutes, adding $5,000 in an hour and hit four month highs. But days later, commentators complained of being bored. The weight of expectations for Bitcoin in 2021, the year after the third halving, and therefore, the deadline for a having cycle price top is palpable. How far Bitcoin price could rise is a matter of intense debate. And while some argue that 200,000 or even 300,000 is quote programmed, others are already losing faith, claiming that this cycle cannot be like the last two. Comparing post having years, however, appears to deliver an almost unanimous verdict on Bitcoin's chances. The main rise to a blow off top has yet to begin. September's dip below 40,000, for example, echoes similar events in 2013 and 2017. These came immediately before liftoff acting as the ultimate bear trap. Overlaying 2021 price performance onto that form 2017 likewise produces uncanny similarities. All these findings from popular trading account TechDev point to this year's peak being an order of magnitude above the last. Technical or not, the, uh, now, the analyst argues a six-figure high is all but logically guaranteed. The similarities, meanwhile, are nothing new with various sources charting the extent of price conformity to previous post having years throughout 2021. What you got, David? Oh, let's go, Gil. He made it. Let's go. Round of applause for Mr. Gilly. Gilly in the city. Yeah, we're going to go ride bikes later on. Hopefully, once this uh, this weather gets a little bit better. A lot of attention on Bitcoin's network's fundamentals with the hash rate difficulty covered near high times. Fresh data shows other aspects of Bitcoin seeing records on their own. Okay, questions over the global Bitcoin. Uh, the countdown to a decision on a Bitcoin exchange traded fund EFT continues to excite this week, but as an approval already priced in. Guys, we got. I think we're getting into like the last two, three minutes here. Um, this is conscious crypto and every single, every single weekday at 2 PM in the afternoon, I'm giving you the latest and the greatest in crypto defined news. If you have not already had an opportunity to go to the Twitch chat, I will invite you there. Now we're going to be getting into, um, our guest on Wednesday, which is going to be talking about the metaverse and how to get involved into the metaverse what is the metaverse and uh, how can you own 
your own little piece of property in the metaverse. That's what we're going to be getting into on Wednesday. And then later on in the week, we're going to have another guest named Eric coming in. Um, and I'm just going to be, I, I just really want to pick his brain on a few things. Uh, he's going to be dropping some gems as well. So that's going to be about it for today, brothers and sisters, beautiful gods and goddesses. Again, this is Conscious Crypto being brought to you by Divine Garments, Casa de Prana TV, Twitch.tv, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.